talk about forgiveness. There was a story that changed my life, and let me share it with you. It was a patient on hospice who had end-stage lung disease. And, and I'm a pulmonologist, and I was doing hospice then. So this was the kind of case that I was an expert in. I don't think many people knew as much as I did, but I was failing right and left with this patient. He would be going back to the hospital almost weekly with shortness of breath. I couldn't control his shortness of breath. I couldn't help him to sleep at night. He was calling out in the middle of the night. He was waking up his wife. It was terrible. And I was, nothing I did helped. In fact, everything I did seemed to make it worse. It was frustrating. So I went to visit him and his wife, and I knew them, knew them very well in the community, and they were my patient even before I was the medical director of the hospice. And as we were sitting there, I said, well, is there something bothering you? And he paused for a long time, and he asked his wife to leave the room. And I was like, whoa, what's going on here? And then he told me this story, and he told it to me very slowly, like he was going to stop any moment. But I'm going to tell it fast, but he told it really slow. And he said, Doc, he goes, 50 years ago in World War II, I was on an island in the South Pacific. He said there was hand-to-hand -hand combat. Some of my buddies had died, and we, we went over this island. And I was making patrol. I was coming around in my Jeep, and over the hill came about 30 Japanese. White flags, guns up high. And he goes, I was by myself, and I took my machine gun out, and I mowed them all down. And then he stopped, and he said, and I've never told a soul until this moment. Oh my, I had no idea. I was over my head and I said something really stupid. I said, well, you were young. It was war, forget about it. He had been trying to forget about it for 50 years. And suddenly you realized, I realized what hospice was about. Hospice was about forgiveness. Hospice was about the fact that each one of us does things we shouldn't do. Each one of us has said things we wish we didn't say. Or we should have said something and we didn't. And as he told me this story, I realized, wow, this is an extreme example of what every patient needs at the end of life. The good news in this case is that the chaplain came in. We actually called his minister. This was a man who had faith. But can you imagine what holding this in had done to his faith after 50 years? In my head, I only think of it as like an axe chopping at a tree. Boom, you know, boom, boom, and as he's holding this in. The amazing story is this man was able to find forgiveness. A couple of things happened. One is he told his wife what had happened. Never told her before, and she told me later. She said, I knew something happened in the war. He would never talk about it. He never would, when his uh, buddies from the war would call and say, let's get together, he never went. And then, Something dramatic happened two weeks later. He said to me, when I come to his house, he wanted to tell his, he had two older sons. They were in their 30s or so. He wanted to tell his sons what had happened. So I sat in the living room, and he told them the same story. And it was very interesting. He added an important part, that when they were born, he said he had to go to the bathroom at the hospital, and he would weep because of all the Chap Japanese that would never be born because of what he did. But in that room, as he told the story, the kids got up, they hugged him, there was tears, there was crying, and he died fairly peacefully just a few weeks later on minimal medicines. Now let me go back to minimal medicines, because what was happening before he told me the story is I was cranking up the morphine, I was cranking up the Ativan, trying to get him to sleep, trying to control his symptoms and his anxiety, and I was failing, and he would have died on mega doses of medicines if this story had not come out. So this is a dramatic story, but everybody has a similar story in some way. And I think if you're seeing a patient in a nursing home, if that story doesn't tell you why they need hospice, you know, I'm not sure what will, but that's what hospice is about. It's not just about pain management. 